Hello everybody and welcome back to the Amnesia channel. In this video I'm going to be continuing my Beyblade breakdown series on episode 2 and in this one as you can see I am doing King Helios. Now in my last one I did Super Hyperion, if you haven't watched that one go and check it out. But yeah in this series I basically get any Beyblade and I break it down into each of its individual parts and then I give a description of the pros and cons and then an overall rating of the parts maybe i probably i forget to do that a lot but <laughs> but yeah and then, as you can see in this one i'm doing king helios and i'll re reiterate it in my last video i'm only talking about stock combo so the parts you see are the parts i'm going to be talking about so yeah without any more waste of time let's just get straight into this one so Starting off with the chip and core, again, just like in my last video, I know this does affect burst resistance and that stuff, but I'm not entirely sure how to talk about that, so I'm just going to put it to one side, because I'm not going to pretend that I know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, I'm just going to go straight into the ring, which is king. Now, the ring for the sparking series is basically the whole layer. As you can see, mine is a little bit worn out on the edge of these blades, but that's just what happens. Now, the king ring, when it focuses, is a left-spinning balance-type ring. Now, as you can see, the five blades do make for some pretty solid offensive and defensive capabilities, as well as having these smaller wings in between each blade, which means that it has got protection all around its ring so there's no weak points for this for this ring in particular anyway uh for anybody curious the ring on its own weighs around 6.2 grams which is off the top of my head i think it's lighter than the super super ring is yeah i think it is lighter than the super ring however i do think it's a bit better than the super ring purely because its defensive abilities are quite good so yeah as you can see from a side view these wings are quite tall so it can block quite a lot of incoming damage and these wings they're not quite as powerful but they're not supposed to be so yeah the five wings do give you quite a bit of attack and defense obviously it's a balance type ring so that's what you'd expect it to do Nothing really special about this ring, no special gimmicks, no special materials with it, just plastic. Um, if you consider left spin to be special, then there you go. But overall, nothing particularly special with this ring. So I'm going to put that down, down to one side. And next part, I'm going to talk about the chassis, which is 1B. Now, King Helios's chassis, 1B, as you can see, is a double chassis. So no disc required. 1B weighs roughly 43.53 grams around that range, which is much lighter compared to Super Hyperion's 1A chassis. But the way this chassis does kind of make up for that weight loss is it's five different blades, again giving it some very decent attack and defensive abilities, unlike the 1A chassis, which is purely offensive. So this bay is a better all-round, better all-rounder. <laughs> so yeah, with the, obviously the double chassis, the teeth are on here. As you can see, you, you can't get the best of luck with them on here. But I'll go over the teeth after I put the bay together. Yeah, like I was saying, the five wings make some pretty good attack and defense. The chassis itself is, it is quite thick, especially where the wings are, as you can see. It is quite thick, and yeah, there's not much to really talk about on its own, so when it focuses, there we go. The trick is, well, the best part about this chassis is that when you put it with the ring, you can have some mode changes. Now, I'll talk about the mode changes after I put the whole stock combo together, so yeah, I'm just going to put that down to one side and talk about the last part, which is... I believe it's zone. I think it's. I think this is the zone driver. I'm. Just, I'm gonna call it zone. And if it's not called zone, I'll just correct it. But yeah, the zone driver is 
a plastic sharp tip. If I can get that close and get it to focus. It's a plastic sharp tip surrounded by a free spinning plastic plate. You see that? Yeah, there we go. It's perfect. Now, this driver obviously is a more of a stamina type driver, but with this free spin ring, it does allow it to sort of have a little bit of counter motion. It's nothing like the Unite driver or Merge driver, but it's the capability is there at the very least. This driver in terms of stamina, it gives it gives a decent amount of stamina, however very little attack and defensive capabilities. As as you can see, the point of contact is obviously a plastic shaft. So you'll get you'll be getting very little friction on the stadium, which means you won't be able to grip onto it. So you'll be you'll be getting knocked around a lot when using this driver, even when you're using like super heavy parts. So yeah. Overall, I don't think this driver is that good. I wouldn't use this driver if I was trying to build anything competitive. But it's a fun driver to use, I think, and it's got a good design as well. So putting the whole bay together, left spin, I forgot about that, you have King Helios Zone 1B. Now, the stock combo of this bay weighs 58.78 grams, you know, give or take a few. And as I've said before, it's a left spinning balance type bay blade. So talking about this bay in more performance wise, uh, as you can see on screen, that it doesn't have a lot of attack power. In fact, it has very little attack power. Um, these blades definitely are good for like knocking away and blocking attacks, especially combined with the chassis. You know, it's very good defensively in my opinion, but the driver does not help it out in terms of defense because it's more of a stamina type driver. So what you really have is a Beyblade that is supposed to be a balance type, but doesn't have enough attack power to burst stamina types and doesn't have enough defensive power to withstand the attacks from attack types. So I don't think this Bay is that entirely good, but it does have a mode change, which I will get into now. So if I take the driver off again, <laughs> we go. as you can see, the chat the wings on the chassis are in between the wings on the ring which means that obviously instead of making contact with the ring it will make contact with the chassis so this is its 10 bladed mode or defense mode and yeah i definitely think the defense mode is the better out of the two but it does have the option to switch and go into five bladed mode or attack mode which is, as you can see, the wings on the chassis are lined up with the ring. So obviously you have this huge contact point which can be used for good smash attacks. Now, for changing modes, there's not a huge difference performance-wise. You're not going to notice a lot of difference. And 99% of the time, changing the modes won't make a difference against your opponent. But... You know, giving the bay the option to do that does give it a little bit of versatility and some variety while using them. So, although I don't think the mode change is that good, the option is still there. My overall opinion on King Helios is that I don't think he's a very strong Beyblade at all. And that's in general. Compared to other Sparking Bays, he's definitely the weakest one to currently be released uh the newest one that's currently out is rage luminor and i haven't got him yet but i can already tell that rage luminor is much much stronger than king helios king helios struggles against rock devore he struggles against valkyrie he struggles against you know super hyperion this bay struggles against some of the weaker gt bays like bushin ashura and dragon and i have a feeling that he might even struggle against some of the top tier chosy bays like chosy valkyrie and potentially even archer hercules i don't think this bay is good 
at all. But if I had to give some recommendations for it, I my recommendation is verse it against attack types because I don't think you're ever going to win against a stamina type with this bay. Even against a bay with really weak teeth like the new Rotdavor, it still can't burst him. So my advice, verse it against someone like the new Valkyrie or Hyperion that focuses on attack obviously and because sometimes this bay can get off a couple of good knockouts which can snatch you a point or two but generally it like if you're doing team battles or draft battles i would try and avoid this bay of legs i don't think it's very strong or competitive just like i did with my last uh bay of leg breakdown i tried to predict which part would be competitive and with that, with Super Hyperion, I said the 1A chassis would be competitive. Now, personally, I don't think any of these parts are going to be competitive. If I had to pick one, I would probably say it would be the Ring. As, although it doesn't weigh a lot, it does have very good defensive contact points. So it could make a pretty good defense combo in the future, depending on the parts that came out for Sparking. But... King Helios stock combo wise, I do not believe is a very strong bay. And I gave Super Hyperion a 6 out of 10. And honestly, I think that was kind of wrong. I think I probably should have put it higher, but oh well. Um, this bay isn't half as good as Super Hyperion. I would honestly give this bay maybe a 3 out of 10 at a push. That's really pushing it. Um, you know, the fact that it's a Beyblade gives it one point. <laughs> so, yeah, this bay is very weak compared to, you know, its current generation. It struggles against the previous generation. So, overall, it's just a very mediocre Beyblade, to say the least. And I'm sorry for those people who love King Helios. Like, I really love the design, but performance-wise, this bay just doesn't bring much to the table that any other Beyblade could counter so yeah yeah thanks again for watching so much i really appreciate it and have a good day